Right, referees are back in the spotlight again. Um, PGMOL, call these names. Chief uh, Howard Webb joined Mike alone in a new show called Match Officials. Mike Top. The show will air weekly with audio, audio, audio of some big decisions <laughs> involving, VAR, involving VAR, involving VAR being played to try and show how the officials uh, reacted to the decisions they did. Now, one decision that everyone talking about was Anana's potential foul against Wolves in the last minute that wasn't given. The referee that day was Simon Hooper with Michael Salisbury on VAR. And this is how they, re- they reached that decision. Have a listen. Possible foul there. Just need to view that. So Anana goes to the challenge for the ball. Just delay, delay, delay. Checking possible penalty. Yeah, no worries, mate. yeah, so I want to view this because I think Onana collapses, uh, collides into him. He's tried to bring him to the ball, but he's late. And he blocks in. We all look at this for me, Westy, please, to see what I'm seeing. So the goalkeeper goes to challenge the ball and he makes an aerial contact with the Wolves player. It's late and it's clumsy, in my opinion. Dawson wins the header. But it's late, it's very late in the aerial challenge. I think if the... Because the Wolves player doesn't head the ball. Yeah, because Dawson heads it. Dawson clearly wins the head. Yeah, and then therefore it's a normal collision as they both challenge the ball from the other two. Yeah. Just stay there because if he goes in, check complete. Like going check complete. Check complete. I mean, referees, like the rest of us, will make mistakes. Absolutely, of course, we all make mistakes. But the problem we've got now, and it's not doing them any favours, VAR, because they get an opportunity to look at it five, six, seven times and then make a mistake. That's the problem. Well, Howard Webb then said, we see the the VAR going through the checking phase while the penalty is not awarded. He starts to go down the road of recommending a review, but then sort of overthinks it a wee bit. Let's get more on this from a man who's a former Premier League referee. Good morning, Dermot Gallagher. Dermot, a very good Dermot, morning. Dermot, good morning. Dermot. How are you? Good morning, both. How are you doing? Oh, Dermot, I just, listen, we could, we could talk all day about decisions and different rules and interpretation of the rules, mm. but that, for me, the two key words were clumsy and late, and, of course, in the box. That was a defender taking down a centre forward as a penalty. Well, I don't think any of us would disagree. It's not a penalty, Alan. Um, and Howard said himself last night that it was a penalty. I think it was much deeper than that last night when I watched it. It was it was very interesting what I learned. You know, I, I refereed in the Premier League and I didn't have that system. Mm. It was so insightful to hear them talking, their input and such like. And, you know, we can dwell on that decision, but there was a lot of good come out of it, wasn't it? Because Howard said um, he felt they overthought it. You know, we're listening to it. We think they overthought it. They actually almost talked themselves out of it in the end. Yeah. But conversely, if you look at a later clip with the Arsenal uh, penalty that was given on Sunday, that was done so quickly by Jared Gillett. You know, he looked at it, he said, wan has put his foot down, Havertz has gone into him, he's relayed up to Anthony Taylor, and it was dealt with much more swiftly. So I think that's the learning points in the few weeks between them incidents that they've drilled down and said, look, we've got to identify what's happened and not start to almost look for something that's not there. Demo, I, I thought at the weekend there was, there was two examples of VR. You mentioned one of them there. <clears throat> one was excellent, another one was very poor. That one there, the Arsenal game, where the initial decision was a penalty, I thought that was v- VR at its best because I did not think it was a penalty. Whereas in the Rangers-Celtic game, that I think VAR got themselves involved in a decision which they should never have got involved in. And I think it was two cases of VAR at the weekend, one good and one bad. And I just think, I don't know whether you agree or not, I said, I've said to Alan, match officials will make mistakes, Dem. of course they will, the same as coaches, same as players, same as managers. And I just think in a normal game, with referees and, 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 and their assistants would understandably be cut a bit of slack. But I just think sometimes with VAR now, it's actually damaging them more when they make mistakes having looked at it. Is that a fair comment? Well, it, it, it all depends whether you're a half full or half empty man, uh, Ali. You know, if you look at Sunday with Arsenal, my gut reaction when I saw it, Ali, was penalty. Yeah. The minute I saw the second reap, I've gone, oh, that is not a penalty. Yeah. And the VAR, he did exactly the same. He had two looks. He relayed to Anthony Taylor. And if you listen to the audio, he relayed to him accurately what had happened. Wan Sack has put his foot on the floor. Havertz has gone into him. I'm going to show you this and I'm going to show it full speed then at uh, 
at the slow speed and Anthony Taylor went to the screen it was very very quick dealt with and everybody goes yeah I get that the Rangers one I mean I, I watched you at half time because I watched the game I watched you at half time yeah. uh, with, um, it was intriguing to me Ali because if you see that um, I don't think it's a foul I think the defender is slow and I think Dessas gets in quickly uh, the referee I thought did great because he just let it go yeah. the play went on and they scored and I was really astonished when the VAR got involved, Ali, because even if you thought it was a foul, I didn't think it was a clear and obvious error. Yes, yeah. And that was the key issue for me. Mm. And I was quite confident when uh, uh, Robertson went to the screen that he would just look at it and go, no, I'm sticking with my decision. Yeah. The, the biggest surprise for me, Ali, was the fact that he saw something on the screen Made him change and he didn't see on the pitch. Yes, yeah. And that's, that's why I think they're different incidents um, I think the second one shouldn't have been flagged up but once it was flagged up it could have been easy been washed away mm. yeah yeah. Um, damn it do you think that this this uh, television program then will benefit referees or not I think it will benefit everybody Alan because mm. I've never seen anything like that I've never heard anything like that I mean it was very very insightful it was uh, very transparent as well because nobody could sit down last night and go hang on they've just cherry picked you know, the Arsenal one, if you like, whatever. They did show the Akanji. They did show the Wolves penalty. Um, they showed great practice with the, the Burnley red card because the referee's behind play. He can't see how the player launched himself and cast him the calf. But it is a red card. We know that. He's flagged up. That was dealt with very, very quickly. So it was a good blend. But more importantly than that, I was intrigued at how many people have input. And uh, like the Akanji one, although they've got it wrong, you know, you could see the different people putting in their point of view. Um, unfortunately, the guy who had the best view, you know, chose not to um, say it was offside, which I think everybody agrees it is. Mm. But I think going forward, if that's what they do, it will be beneficial for everybody because they they might not always agree, but they'll have a better understanding of how these decisions were arisen at. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, nice one. Brilliant, Thank damn you it, for your thanks, time. Mate. Damn it, thank Great. you.